Right, well, what a time it has been in politics. We've been through the local body elections, if you could be bothered getting up and voting. By the way, Hamilton, I think, the lowest turnout on average anywhere in the country. It has delivered a raft of mayors who generally have swung to the right. It would appear the country is rejecting the left somewhat, and that may be indicative of the national political mood. That is apart from Wellington, where Tory Farnell, political lobbyist, Green Party insider and friend of Labour Party lobbyist has become the mayor. Um, Wayne Brown, of course, not quite a wild card, but a slightly unpredictable or unknown quantity, is mayor in Auckland. And he is surrounded, of course, by PR people like Ben Thomas, who also gets to commentate on the radio, and Matthew Hooten, the uh, political Svengali who gave us Todd Muller, which didn't last long. Um, so it seems that in many ways the, um, the lines between being a political... Oh, and also Chris Farfoy, former Cabinet Minister, Minister of Broadcasting, announces that he is going to be a PR lobbyist in Wellington getting people in to see politicians. I want to deal with that issue in a moment. But first up, the other thing that's happened this week is Gaurav Sharma says the Labour Party were going to shaft him and kick him out um, prior to the election. So he has uh, resigned from Parliament, forcing a by-election, which Labour is running around saying is a complete waste of money, even though they would have been happy to have a by-election in Rongatai if Paul Legal had become Mayor of Wellington. To discuss all this and what's happening politically, we're joined by a good friend of the programme, from uh, the Democracy Project, uh, Bryce Edwards. Bryce, how are you, mate? Good to uh, be talking to you. Uh, yeah, it is good. Lots of interesting stuff going on and some depressing things in terms of what, what you're talking about in terms of lobbyists being so central to how politics carries out in this country. Look, Viv, I guess you get inside the Beltway and I would consider myself probably most of the time inside the Beltway or having uh, dwelt there for some time. Oh, yeah. There reaches a point where you just kind of accept them, right? They are part of the furniture of politics yeah. in New Zealand, aren't they? They are, and I've got a suspicion they're more part of the furniture than in a lot of other countries. So there's a bit more scrutiny in other countries about the role of these political insiders, and they have a few more kind of laws, regulations to stop the lobbyists and PR people becoming a bit <coughs> too powerful. Yeah. And uh, being able to just cross backwards and forwards between uh, elected office and, you know, working in the uh, executive and, and government and working in the private sector. Are they um, power that powerful, though, or is it all an illusion? Are they just people who speak and talk a big game, Bryce, go to lunch and, to be honest, self-flagellate in some ways? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that is quite possible. Um, I mean, these are the people that are around the politicians. Um, I mean, Ardern is surrounded by a lot of PR and lobbyists or people from those professions giving her advice. Does it work? Um, it's hard to say, isn't it? I mean, it certainly worked at the last election. She got 50% of the vote. Um, you know, Ardern herself has this background in communications, a degree uh, in communications at PR, and it does have a big impact, I think, on our politics, even if it's not necessarily uh, producing a lot of substance it does kind of form the, the way they make decisions. And I think sometimes we, have, we do have vested interests that are getting an inside track uh, voice into the decision makers that wouldn't be allowed in other countries. OK, Bryce, so, well, let's go there. Yeah. Give us the examples, the worst examples. I think the worst examples are um, when Jacinda Ardern had uh, invited in a lobbyist to run the beehives. Her chief of staff was a guy, G.J. Thompson. He was a lobbyist. He's running a, a lobbying firm, um, Thompson Lewis. He came in at the start of her, um, her time as government, helping her set up um, the kind of systems in the government, employing all the new staff, and then went just straight back into lobbying and um, continuing to advise, I think, Ardern and a friend. What a sweet time, position then. You have set up it, the entire infrastructure. Yeah that the ministers work okay. under, and then you go out and say to commercial paying clients, I can get you in there. And of course you exactly. can, because you know exactly how it works. And you've probably exactly. appointed half the people who are the gatekeepers. 
Yep, indeed. So this would be a huge scandal in other countries. Here in New Zealand, we're a bit relaxed about these things, and you know, she'll be right. You know, um, it's a small country. You've got to expect a bit of crossover. People say, you know, um, and people are fairly, you know, straight up, and they wouldn't do anything too wrong. They, you know, people, people are honest here. <laughs> it's sort of the thought. We don't need any scrutiny of these people. But of course, you and I know, <laughs> you know, that is just too complacent. And yeah, no, and you know? look, my thing as a journalist, Bryce, always is if there's nothing going on here, you won't mind me having a look then. Exactly. And you won't mind a bit of transparency. And really, that's the answer for a lot of these things. It's just a bit of transparency. So now, as you said in your intro, um, we've, we've got a lot of lobbyists working in Auckland and Wellington city councils, including the, the new mayor of Wellington. Um, I just think she should, uh, you know, be up front and say who the clients were. Yeah, well, she wasn't up front about the fact that she was basically a Green Labor candidate, right? Um, yeah, there was a bit of uh, murkiness there. Good <laughs> friends good friends with a guy called Neil Jones who has worked inside the Labor Party and now runs a company that she was working with him in, which basically is yep. what to meet a Labor cabinet minister come and see us. Yep. And also exactly. associated with a guy called is it Clint Smith who yep. looks like he once put paper clips on something and just into a doing office and he says he won the election, basically. He's a very interesting guy on Twitter um, and who I invite on the programme regularly and never never responds. So really, has is Wellington now being run by a Green Party lobbyist? Is that the Mayor of Wellington and her mates? Well, certainly... Certainly, yes, the, the mayor is someone that used to work in the beehive running the Green Party operations. Then she became a, a corporate lobbyist with uh, these other political insiders that have close connections with the, the Labour Party. Uh, now she's mayor. Her firm used to you know, work for all sorts of you know, property developers. We don't know exactly who they were. Now she's pushing through some housing program. Um, it might well enrich a lot of property developers in Wellington um, and that's why there's a bit of a conflict of interest there. That right. So how do we get around about. that? Do you have to declare what your interests are, who you've worked for? Does that preclude you as a mayor or as a elected representative no. from doing business with people? What's the solution if that is the problem? Yeah. Look, it's, it's a bit tricky. I mean, you don't want to stop people standing for mayor. You don't want to, you know, I don't think now as mayor, Tori Farnell can't deal with particular issues just because her firm lobbied in those areas. But just a bit of transparency, a bit of light shone on these areas so at least the public know. Okay, so if her lobbying firm was dealing with, you know, these particular property developers and now as mayor, um, you know, they might have an interest in moving into that market that she's, you know, setting the policy on, um, they can decide for themselves. Um, yeah. I mean, certainly also going in the other direction, I think um, when elected officials um, or just bureaucrats go from being mayor or uh, cabinet ministers, they should have a bit of a calling down period mm. um, before they become lobbyists. Okay, we're you know, talking um, now about Chris Farfoy. Well, he did have a few yeah. months out in the wilderness. And I guess the yeah, thing for Chris Farfoy, looking at the way the political winds are blowing, he better get in there and cash up on his connections before there's a change of government, Bryce. Oh, that's right. That's, um, I mean, he has to find a job. He has to, you know, uh, use the skills that he's got. But I think a lot of people will be cynical that he'll use his networks. I mean, he's already advertising, you know, his, in the market, his networks and saying that, you know, he has some sort of connections or knowledge yeah. um, of the, the, the political process and the way the beehive works and, you know, pay him and he will share that with you. Yeah. And in some countries that's kind of called corruption. Yeah. Let's look at Auckland, which is kind of the flip side of this. Yeah. We've got a new mayor there in, in Wayne Brown, who's, uh, I think, media manager was a guy called Tim Hurdle, long associated with the National Party. I think he's worked for Jerry Brownlee. Yep. And worked yep. for the National Party. Associated with him, and I'm not sure about the details, I didn't, do not want to defame the man, is Ben Thomas, a man who is held up by outfits like RNZ to be an independent political commentator and pops up on the TV when actually he's just a paid lobbyist and certainly right-aligned. And Matthew Hooten behind the scenes, the brilliant Svengali behind Todd Muller's National Party leadership. 
Um, that yeah. looks like, if you like, a mirror image of Tory Farnow. Yeah, exactly. So it's the right side of politics. And there is the connection with Tory Farnell because, uh, of course, Ben Thomas has worked for the same firm. They've been in the same firm together, ah. government relations with Neil Jones. That's cosy. So, yes, it is cosy. So that's, yeah. that's New Zealand politics. It, it's cosy. Yeah. Um, but, yes, these are, the, these are the right side of politics. So yeah. in Mayor um, Wayne Brown's office, yes, um, a number of political insiders, lobbyists, Again, we just don't know what, who their clients have been, and that that's really the key thing in my um, in my view is for them to be transparent about that. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with um, the likes of Hooton, Tim Hurdle, working in these offices, um, but grifting just, away, you know, grifting away to their heart's desire. Yeah, I mean, these are talented people, so you know, I'm not surprised. Are they? Between are they, Brown. Bryce, or do yeah. they just tell us they're talented and they get lots of column centimeters? So we think they are. Oh, look, it's a subjective thing, isn't it? They yeah. all um, have some... I mean, uh, how talented was Matthew Hooton in getting Todd Moore oh, to be leader of the nation? I mean, that was one of the greatest disasters in politics in New Zealand history. Yeah, and he'll, he'll have to live that down for a long time. Yeah. And um, I don't know, these people... I mean, is Clint yeah. Smith, this lobbyist, talented? I've just had someone text in saying he is the personification of cognitive dissonance Reading his tweets, I don't know what reality he's living in, but it's certainly not this one. Well, what he does is he does a very good job of translating Labour government uh, sentiment into the Twitter sphere, into the media, and kind of getting the, the troops, you know, the, the, the true believers kind of uh, passionate and defending their side. So he's, you know, I, no, I don't, I'm not saying he's paid by the government to do stuff. I don't know what who his contracts are worth. Oh, come but, on, Bryce, you know, I'm not saying he isn't. Look at know, it, he's utterly right. tribal. Yeah, he's very tribal. The guy's a shill. He job of, of, of shrilling for the, the Labour government. This is absolutely true. And he convinces a lot of people really on the left to stick with Labour and to, you know, um, to to be active. Uh, so, you know, he's kind of a, a, a political um, tub thumper, really. And, yeah, he's, he's very good at that job. So, Bryce, if we were going to clean this up, if we were going to take away the doubt, and, look, I'm sorry, it's so interesting listening to people from outside looking on the inside. I suddenly realise how accepting I am of the level of dirt and graft that goes on in politics. How do we clean this up? Or how do we just put some basic rules in that would prevent or make the public more confident that there is not abuse of the lobbying system? Yeah, so there's a there's a growing debate at the moment, especially after the far controversy, to have a bit more regulations, a few more rules, and I don't have all the answers to that, but I do think we need a register of, of lobbyists. We yeah. need a code of conduct for them, um, but most importantly, they need to be transparent about who their clients are. Um, some of them do. And so yeah. I think people do like they, Connor English... Aren't the they lobbyist. private businesses? Why should they tell people? Well, that's right. And, and maybe... So um, I, I kind of look here, and I'm trying to balance this with the New Zealand I knew of 20 yeah. or 30 years ago, where I kind of did trust people to do the decent thing and underlying it all to be right. I don't know that I feel the same about New Zealand today. I think we're more feral, venal and tribal than we used to be. But yeah, we're a small and country, and when people, when people, you know, act improperly, it's got a strange way of coming out. Sometimes it does, and as we've seen with various, you know, court trials around the New Zealand First Foundation and National and Labour donors, they end up in the High Court, and we get lots of column of inches, but we still don't really have a very rigorous system. You know, those people all got off, of course, or nearly most of them. Um, and, I don't know, I think New Zealanders end up being quite cynical that they just get away with it all and we then see people kind of being alienated from politics, not voting, not, you know, yep. actually having yep. much trust in yeah, the Yeah, not engaging. Process. I'll tell you not another engaging. funny observation, Bryce, that I've made. I know quite a lot of these lobbyists when I think about it and realise they are lobbyists. A lot of them used to work for ministers way back in, like, the 1980s. There's this tide that goes in and out, and certain firms, of course, are associated, not quite directly, but with a certain type of administration. 
I noticed lately that a couple of lobbyists I know who have had quite lean years in the Labor times, right, because they haven't had access, and they literally haven't had access, and they've told me that basically the door of the beehive slams shut and they have to do other sorts of business other than political business because they're not part of the tribe. A number of them, or two of them, have come to me in the last two or three months say, interesting, I'm getting clients back and clients are preparing for a change of government by re-engaging with lobbyists who they know might get them in to see the next administration. It's a very interesting weather vane of the political mood of the country and of business. Isn't, it, isn't that fascinating? Yes, indeed. Um, I, I think it's all about connections, and you've got to have the connections with those that are powerful. And so, yeah, the, those labour connections are becoming less valuable and it's the ones with uh, the right of politics that are, are going up in value. So isn't that fascinating? We're going yeah. to see probably some new lobbying firms that are created to, you know, to, on the right of politics now. That yeah, yeah, I, a, a absolutely. Like, a likely national hey, government. Bryce, why well, I've got you here, we've got a by-election coming in Hamilton West. Um, oh, it's going to be intense. Yeah. Now, how important is this in the context of the next election? Because that's kind of what we're... That's the next critical moment in politics in New Zealand. Uh, the possibility of real change uh, comes yeah. at the next Look, election. Ha in context, what is a by-election in Hamilton West? What influence does it have on that? It has a huge psychological impact. You know, whoever wins this really can have bragging rights that they are on track for uh, a win at the next year's election. I mean, it might be a bit, I don't know, the, the relationship between those things might not be that scientific, but it just will give a big boost to either National or Labour going into the barbecue yeah. season. But is you know, it possible? Is Sharma going to stand as an independent? Do we have an indication of that yet? Well, he says so. He also says he's setting up a party and it normally is the trend for the the resigning MP to stand again and try and win that and then set yeah. up their party. So Winston Peters yeah. you know, stood as an independent when he you know, uh, resigned and set a bit of by-election. Tariana Terrier, likewise. Um, so that's his intention. He says he's got a name for his new party, even, but he's not telling us yet. The Gaurav uh, Sharma but, party, from what I hear about him. Yeah. Um, he's also got backing, I think, a report last night, a very wealthy yeah. Indian businessman, um, or ethnically Indian businessman, he's a New Zealand businessman, is going to throw money at him. So really, if Sharma goes in and wins the thing, why is that Unlikely a victory? Uh, why is that a victory for Labor? Well, that wouldn't be a victory for Labor or National. Absolutely, and wouldn't that be fascinating? I mean, I think it's um, it's very unlikely, but yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, I, no, I think it's Nationals the the most likely uh, winner from this. Yeah, uh, where are National going to find another schoolboy who's beaten someone in the dorm room to stand as a candidate? Well, they, they must be running out of people like that. That's but look, <laughs> they've got Tim Macedo, and he has actually held the seat for four terms yep. in a row until so you retreat Tim and throw him in there. And, yeah, I think they'll just bring him back, and he's pretty solid. And what do Labor do? Um, yeah, look, I'm not sure. Um, they've got some, you know, they've got some talent there, but um, they really do need a strong candidate if they've got a chance of winning this. Yeah. And it, I don't know, it's it, the odds are against them at this stage. Yeah. Um, they might have a, a huge majority, 6,500, but I think that's going to just melt away. OK, um, now the Prime Minister the says this is a waste of money. Terrible, Mr Sharma. We were never going to shaft him before the election. Um, I'm not buying, to be honest, um, no, at all. We, and we they were happy anything. to have a by-election in Rongatai if Paul Eagle had won the Auckland, uh, the Wellington mayoralty. Oh, look, these by-elections are just hard to justify, aren't they? No, um, they're not, no, because people deserve representation. And if that costs yeah, one and a half million dollars, that's chicken feed in terms of the government's look, budget I, I price. I agree with you. It's not, it is chicken feed, but it's still money. And Simon Bridges caused a by-election in Tauranga um, totally unnecessary just because he wanted to move on to another career. Likewise, yes, with um, Paul Eagle, he was going to cause one if he won. Yeah. Um, but yes, I, I, funnily enough, I think Sharma's probably got more justification than any of those two. Yeah. In the sense of, um, yeah, I, I, I think he was under a real threat of being expelled. It's, it's hard to know whether it would have happened. Um, but 
yeah, it's a bit more justifiable yeah. than just wanting to move on. to. And Hamilton job. West, what sort of electorate is that? And it is a, is well, it representative of New Zealand? Is it, is it a little microcosm of New Zealand or not? Uh, very much of middle New Zealand. And yeah. probably, yeah, very middle class New Zealand. Um, you know, it's, it's historically in the last 20 elections, I think, um, it's yeah. Oh, sorry, it's just divided. It goes between. Switch okay, so it is a swinging quite electorate, quite evenly. So not yeah, a bad it's, weather it's, vein for what is happening oh, nationally. It is exactly, and um, it tends to go with whatever government is in power, yeah. and so um, or you know whichever government's about to come into power, and um, but it's probably been more blue in the last few years it's it's got a bit more higher income i think and so therefore nationals won it four out of five times recently. okay so your prediction bryce and i'm not gonna hold you to, Look, to I, it but what's your feeling it, as of today my feeling is it will go it will go to national but i really you know it's, it's going to depend a lot on what happens with act the greens new zealand first and if sharma splits the vote so you know what happens if he does run a strong campaign and he, you know, a lot of people that want to give the government a bloody nose vote for him rather than the national. Mm. Nationals, you know, kind of anti-government vote could be split. Labour could still squeak in because of that. Plenty of grist for the mill. Look, just very, very quickly, because we're coming up to the top of the hour. Uh, Bryce, I have noted, noticed in the last few weeks that this government is listening. We look at the Shakespeare issue this week, when it, which it hosed down yep. very quickly. We look at the reversal on the guilty bonus for lawyers, for duty solicitors. I get the feeling that Labor knows it's in some trouble and is trying to be more responsive to mainstream public opinion than it has been for a while. Yeah, nothing focuses a, pro a politician's mind like a, a, a opinion poll and the election coming up. So, yeah, I, I think they are changing tack big time and they'll be looking to maybe dump three waters, look at some of those co-governance issues. So we see today that co-governance decisions have been delayed once more. Um, so, yeah, they'll be trying to extinguish all those those fires. Good luck with that. And it's groundswell day today. It's track today, isn't it? Hey, Bryce, always Indeed. fascinating, mate. We must, must catch up before Christmas. For a glass of vino at a nice uh, spot in Wellington too, my friend. Thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. That is uh, Dr Bryce Edwards. Uh, he runs the Democracy uh, Project, which looks into a whole lot of issues of uh, political public life uh, in New Zealand. It's an academic uh, enterprise. And I like Bryce because I can quite properly say that he is not in the pay of anyone. He's not a lobbyist. He tells us what he thinks and he has... Uh, some background and some information. Um, oh, uh, on the lobbyist, I love this from John. From down on the farm, it all sounds like BS to me. There should be no lobbyist. John, I, I like your attitude. Thank you.